Do you need a filament dry box? Well, maybe. Fix Dry sent me their latest box to review the double NT1. So let's take a look at that and also talk about filament drying in general. Shake build stuff. Pretty much all the materials we use in our FDM 3D printers are at least to some degree hygroscopic meaning they absorb moisture from the air. This absorbed moisture can have several negative impact on our prints. How much depends on the type of filament used and the environment where it's stored and printed from. A humid environment will be more of a problem than a dry one. A filament dry box is basically just a dehumidifier shaped to hold and dispense filament. Fix Dry's double NT1 can store one three kilogram roll or two one kilogram rolls. The latter is ideal for me as I have two printers and can use just the one dry box to dispense filament for both. The lid has several holes in various locations to route the filament out of the box, which should help accommodate a variety of workstations. By the way, Fix Dry sent me this unit free of charge for review, but they do not have editorial overview, nor are they sponsoring this video. I have a review policy linked below. The TLDW is, yes, I do recommend a dry box to pretty much everybody, and I can recommend the double NT1. There's a coupon code DAVE10 to save 10% off your order and an affiliate link in the description below or off to the side, whatever YouTube's weird layout is these days. I swapped out the included rubber grommets in the filament exit holes for these push connect pneumatic fittings for PTFE tubing for a more rigid filament path to my extruders. It allows you to set a timer and also the drying temperature up to 70 degrees Celsius. That's also great for me as I typically print a lot of higher temperature materials that need extra heat for drying. My previous dry box maxed out at 50 C. But is this really necessary and what does moisture ingress into our filament actually do? Mostly you'll notice poor cosmetic results. Things like increased stringing and a roughish, inconsistent looking extrusion. One key symptom of moist filament is a snap, crackle, pop sort of sound audible from the nozzle during extrusion. You might also notice some steam coming from the nozzle. Matter Hackers has a great article on this with some examples linked below. This is also associated with reduced layer adhesion and overall weaker parts. In some extreme cases, it can even lead to clogged nozzles and failed prints. Check out CNC Kitchen's excellent video on this subject for more details. Filament moisture ingress depends on where your printer is and the type of materials you're printing with. I live in Southern California where it's pretty dry most of the time, but we have had a few wet winters recently. Still, moisture ingress for me is usually not much of an issue. Anecdotally, here's my experience with various materials. PLA is not that big of a problem most of the time, but I have seen a bit of stringing developed that was solved with drying the filament. The polycarbonate that I really love to print a lot is maybe a bit more sensitive than PLA, but still not too bad. Nylon, however, is super bad. One of the worst filaments for moisture sensitivity. It definitely needs to be kept dry and dried before and during use if possible. TPU also seems to be sensitive, but I don't print very often, so my experience here is limited. The Fix Dry NT1 has an overall nice modern aesthetic look with its tinted cover and brushed steel metal base. It certainly looks better than the cheap plasticky old dry box I had, especially in between my two cool looking printers. 
My print workstation is in my living space, so I like to have it look nice if possible. Inside, there are two sets of large plastic rollers for the filament to roll on. There's a pretty good size vent for an also large heating element. They include this plastic air deflector to route hot air from the bottom of the filament rolls and up the sides. This should help circulate the airflow for even drying. Loading and routing the filament up through the holes is a bit awkward as I have it configured, but it's not too big of a deal. The biggest issue with this dry box is the noise. Despite being labeled as low working noise, it's not. The fan is about as loud as my printer's fans. That's not really a problem during printing, but it's pretty noticeable when not printing. Like say for example, I want to dry some filament overnight. It would be nice if there was an actual quiet mode that would run the fan at say 30% speed. Less efficient, slower overall drying, but an actual quiet operation. So do you need a filament dry box? I do recommend to everyone yes, and I can recommend the Fix Dry Double NT1. Reminder, there is a coupon code DAVE10 and affiliate link in the description below to save 10% off your order. There are so many variables affecting FDM 3D printing that anytime you can eliminate one of them can really help you out a lot. Using a filament dry box like the Double NT1 is a great way to ensure that your filaments are always dry and any issues you might be having with printing is not a result of moist filament. That alone is enough to make a filament dry box a good investment for anyone, even if you're only printing PLA in the desert. However, if you live somewhere with any decent amount of humidity and you want to print with any other material, a filament dry box starts to become more and more of an essential accessory. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you found it informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I look forward to sharing more projects with you in the future.